Well, I heard you you might have needed to cancel on us to get uh, Kamala Harris on. I was not going to do that. Um, I would have had to. I knew you guys flew from England, and I wasn't going to cancel on you because I. She had an opportunity to come. In. Someone's. You could look at this and you could say, "Oh, you're being a diva," but she had an opportunity to come here when she was in Texas, and I, I literally gave them an open invitation. I said, "Any time." I said, "If she's done at ten o'clock, I'll we'll come back here at ten o'clock." Mm. I go, "I'll do it at nine in the morning. I'll do it at ten p.m. I'll do it at midnight." She's up. In this latest Joe Rogan experience, Joe Rogan keeps it real with some behind-the-scenes insights. Joe Rogan talks about sticking to his word with his original guests who flew in from England, even though he had a last-minute chance to interview Kamala Harris. For Joe, respect and keeping promises mean a lot. Joe Rogan also dives into people's assumptions about his politics, how pick-a-side tribalism is affecting media, and his views on censorship and free speech. This is one Joe Rogan experience episode you don't want to miss. Yeah, but I think this idea that you're being a diva is silly because you're asking her, you're offering her the opportunity to do exactly what the other candidate did, right? Well, she actually reached out when she found out that he was coming on. So their camp reached out to me. So I said, great, I would love to talk to her. Mm. But it was very difficult to tie it down. And a lot of they wanted to travel. And see, the, the thing is, like, you can't, if, if I go somewhere, then there's going to be other people in the room. And they want to control a lot of things, I'm sure, according to the, the Brett Breyer interview on mm. Fox. Like, people were waving them off. That's a distraction. Mm. People mm-hmm. in the room, like, my whole goal with her and with him is just talk. Just sit, have a conversation like a human being. You, you find out things about people. You get a sense of them, at least, a real sense. That was it. I don't give a fuck what we talk about. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I just I just want to talk to you. Do they? Do you think they think that you're on his side and they're more wary of you? I don't know. I mean, there's... Uh just because of my appearance, there's always been this assumption that I'm some right-wing MAGA guy. If you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It truly makes a huge difference help support the channel. Now let's dive back into the video. Just, I was a Bernie supporter. Mm-hmm. You know, I am um, not, I'm a politically homeless person, mm-hmm. for sure. You know, I always considered myself a, a left-wing person. I never thought I would ever vote right-wing. But then the, the tides of culture shifted in a very bizarre way. And it just made me, over time, much more aware of what this stuff is really all about. Because what this stuff is really all about is just these natural human behavior patterns and these tribal instincts that we have. And it overpowers all discussions. It overpowers what's good for the collective group. It overpowers everything. It's just people team and then whatever that team says, it, they can do no harm. They will do their best to marginalize the horrible effects of the furthest mm-hmm. extreme version of that, whether it's Antifa or the Proud Boys. They'll minimalize the. It's the same thing, man. Joe Rogan seems pretty frustrated with how people label his politics. He's basically saying, hey, I'm not some right wing guy like people think. In fact, he's even supported Bernie Sanders and describes himself as politically homeless. It's actually a big thing, because a lot of Americans feel the same way. They don't fully connect with either party. Joe's experience kind of shows how quick people are to slap labels on others based on a few opinions or how they come across. And it just doesn't always add up. It's the same. If you look at what's going on with the liberals right now, so progressives are, they want the war in Ukraine to be funded. They want to censor speech online, and they want to give the World Health Organization, which is deeply influenced by Big Pharma, including the FDA, deeply influenced. The revolving door between the FDA and pharmaceutical drug companies is legendary. And they want to give them control over what we take and what we don't Mm -hmm. take. That's crazy. And that doesn't make sense because that's not what the liberals were when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. My parents were hippies. You know, we we lived in San Francisco during the Vietnam War. My parents were like straight up hippies. That's how I was raised. And so for me, it was always like the liberals were the ones who wanted education and open mindedness. The liberals who were the ones with the ACLU let the Nazis talk and let them have a rally. They said you can't infringe on people's free speech because if you infringe on the speech of people that you disagree with, and hypocrite. You got it. The only solution to bad speech is better speech. We've always known that. Joe Rogan has some real concerns about censorship and control, especially with how big organizations handle information, like in public health. He's wary of how much power big companies and institutions seem to have over what gets said and what people are allowed to hear. A lot of people share this distrust, feeling like the official story sometimes favors certain views while pushing others aside. 
Joe's basically saying we need a space where anyone can question and discuss openly if we want a truly healthy democracy. It's all about keeping conversations open and letting people decide for themselves. But when they had the power over social media and these collective groups of people that all had the same ideology, and then that tribal mentality kicks in, and you lose the perspective that you should have as an educated, educated person that recognizes that everyone has to be able to talk, and we have to figure out who's right. And you might be wrong. You might be wrong. And you might be clinging to this idea that you're right, and you're going to do the whole thing a terrible disservice. All right. Here's a quick rundown of Joe Rogan's latest. So Joe explains why he didn't jump at a last-minute chance to interview Kamala Harris. He had some guests fly all the way from England, and he didn't want to cancel on them. He offered Harris a few options to make it work, but ultimately he kept his word to his original guests. It's a refreshing move, showing he values commitment over chasing a big name. Joe also talks about how people get his politics all wrong. People assume he's right-wing, but he actually supported Bernie Sanders and considers himself politically homeless. It's relatable for a lot of folks who don't feel like they fit perfectly in either party these days. Then he dives into the impact of tribalism on media and politics, how people are pressured to pick a side, and how that leads to a lot of black and white thinking. He's also pretty vocal about concerns over censorship and the control big institutions have over information, especially around health. Joe's all about keeping the conversation open and letting people make up their own minds. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton.